Um, if your presentation, if you just want to press present down there, we'll make sure gotcha. that um, everything's good. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have the show. I was on here for nine hours yesterday. I think I got 10 hours today. Um, people don't want to look at my ugly face. All right. I think I'm good there. And then I just I add it to the stream. Yeah, it's up right. I'll just add it right now, coach. Gotcha. All right. All right perfect. So, yeah, there it is. Boom. So um, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, coach Callahan, thank you for coming on. For the coaches that are watching or will watch, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and then jump right into the clinic, coach. I'm going to jump off here, use the bathroom, but I'll be listening, okay, if you need anything. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Troy. Thank no, you, I, brother. I appreciate you guys having me on, um, especially Coach PJ Gibbs uh, for asking me to do this. Uh, Coach Gibbs, I actually played for in high school uh, at Manasquan High School here in New Jersey. Uh, he's also a Manasquan alum, uh, so long blue line, going strong. Uh, appreciate All right, it. I got a question. I got a P yep. PJ text. I almost forgot this. Oh, he said, boy. when you get Kevin Callahan on, ask him about the 2009 conference championship game against Raritan. Yep, I knew he was going to bring that up. That, that's, there you go. That's a good one. Um yep. Yeah, that, that's one maybe for another day. But, you know, long story short, they had a, uh, a really good receiver uh, who ended up, you know, playing at a really high-level school, ended up going to the NFL, and we'll leave it at two catches for 12 yards uh, when I was on. That's what we'll leave it at, Troy. So uh, it's one of Coach Gibbs' favorite stories uh, to bring up. So it was a, that was a good day. It was a good day for the, the, the Big Blue Warriors. But, um, but no, it's uh, – it's good. Um, no, I appreciate it. Um, what I'm going to talk about a little bit today um, is just how we use tempo in our uh, in our offense. Um, you know, we we do a good job here at Monmouth of dictating the style and, and play, uh, pace of the game. Um, so wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Um, you know, a little bit about our school at Monmouth. Uh, we're an FCS program located right on the beach in New Jersey, West Long Branch. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to go to school. And we play football in the CAA conference. Um, this past season, 2022, was our first year in that league. Um, and we thought we had a lot of success offensively. Um, you look at our total offense numbers, um, you know, we were ninth overall in the country, first in our conference, uh, scoring offense, you know, averaging over 36 points per game. Again, ninth in the country, uh, first in the conference. And then uh, our explosive play numbers, you know, uh, the percentage of our plays that went for over 20 yards. It was over 10 percent of our total plays offensively, which was good enough for eighth overall in the country. And then, uh, you know, percentage of pass plays that went for over 20 yards was 14.2 percent of our pass plays, which was 18th overall in the country. And I think a huge piece of this, whether it was total yards per game, points per game or explosive plays per game, were our ability to use tempo a bunch of different ways. Um, this is really our tempo progression here at Monmouth, um, you know, really kind of boiling into into five main tempos that we that we live in our base tempo, um, our play fast tempo, which is really a formation and a play tag, our one word families or one word plays, our freeze tempo, and then our huddle tempo. Um, you know, but, but for us, it's important to be a multiple tempo offense. You know, we're not going to be an offense that wants to play fast all the time. We want to use tempo to dictate the style of the game and the pace of the game. We want to be the aggressor. We want to, uh, you know, essentially dictate how the game is played from the time that the ball is kicked off until the time that the clock hits zero. You know, we want to dictate the pace of the game and how it's being played. And that's why we use tempo a bunch of different ways. Um, so to get into a little bit more here, um, you know, just as a brief overview, so our, our base tempo, um, you know, we're a no huddle operation. We're going to use quarterback cadence. We're going to RPO um, and leave the quarterback as the decision maker, uh, as the decision maker, you know, pretty much how spread offense is being played in today's day and age. That That's our base tempo. Our, our goal is to get aligned with 25 seconds on the play clock and let the offense work, whether that's the offensive line and center, you know, getting their calls in and creating points where that's the quarterback using cadence uh, and understanding what the defense is doing. We want to get aligned as fast as possible to be able to gather information before the ball is snapped. 
Okay, so that's our base tempo. Our play fast formation and play uh, tempo is really a no huddle um, tempo where we're going to set a formation strength and a play direction. All right, so getting to our base calls in a little bit quicker pace. Okay, so we'll get a little bit more into that here in a second. Um, but it's not, this is not our one word stuff. All right, this is not our one word stuff where we're locked into a um, a formation, okay? We are going to set a formation and set a play direction. We're just going to do it uh, more quickly than in our base tempo, okay? And our, our goal is to snap the ball with over 25 seconds on the clock, okay? Our one word families are, are things that probably everybody is familiar with. That's where everything is included. The formation is included, the play is included, the snap count is included, and we're trying to snap the ball with over 28 seconds on the clock. Okay. The thing I think we do a good job of um, that might be a little unique is categorizing those one word plays into families um, and, and creating a good learning progression for our players. Um, the last two would be our freeze and huddle. You know, our freeze tempo, again, self explanatory. We're given the illusion of tempo, uh, but and we can do that out of multiple formations. Right. And the, the goal is really hey, get a specific look for a sp specific play. Maybe we want to run outside zone versus this particular front or we want to call this play versus cover four okay so freeze them make sure we're getting a specific look for a specific play and then going from there okay the other way would be able to just try and steal five yards you know hey maybe it's third and four and we're trying to get a freeze to get a cheapie to jump to get those guys to jump off size or hey we're just gathering information right what are they trying to do on this particular snap OK, and then our huddle uh, tempo is really um, to hide our hand. All right. That this is where we're going to get in a true huddle, hold the formation. OK, break in waves and then be able to play in there. All right. And our goal, again, is to hide the formation, drain clock. All right. Maybe in a four minute uh, situation or generate our tempo calls in a non tempo situation. And we'll get into that um, as we get going as well. But those are really our five uh, main tempos as you look at it is you've got your base, you've got your play fast, you've got your one word families, you've got your freeze, and then your huddle, okay? The the biggest thing is when are we playing fast, all right? Because like I said, is it's not all the time. The, the number one time we will play fast is after an explosive play. So we create, um, you know, maybe a deep pass down the sideline or whatever it is, or hit a deep post ball, and we've got the defense on their heels. We've got them moving. All right, so hey, now let's get into a play fast world to keep them on their heels. Okay. After a made first down, you know, and this I think shows up a lot with defensive substitution. Maybe we were able to generate a first down on a third down and the defense is still in a sub package, especially as those are becoming a lot more popular. Well, Hey, let's play fast on them to keep that sub package in the game in a situation that they might not necessarily be comfortable in. Okay. The other one would be if the ball comes to your sideline and not necessarily out of bounds. And I'll talk about that here in a sec. But when the ball comes to your sideline um, or a near hash is probably a better way to put it is the signal mechanics and processing become so much easier and faster for your players. OK, where, hey, if that ball is tackled on the near hash, th there's a high probability that the majority of the players are in the area of the ball. OK, and they are a lot closer to your signaler on the sideline. So they're able to pr pick up the signal, process the signal and get aligned a lot faster when that ball is closer to where those signals are coming from. On the opposite side of things is defensively, they're trying to operate um, when the ball is on a far sideline, right? That ball is on the far hash. So for them to look over across the field, get lined up, figure out what's going on. It's a half second, split second slower than when the signal and ball, everything is right there and the offense can just go, okay? Uh, we will play fast on third down, right? So maybe we're trying to keep a defensive sub personnel out of the game, okay? We know if it's greater than third and five, maybe it's third and five, third and six plus, they're gonna bring in dime substitution. All right, so hey, if we run our second down play and we're in said third down situation, Let's try and get to a play fast call to keep that defensive sub personnel out of the game. Or, you know, maybe there's somebody who kind of blindly subs 
right, in third down situation where they know automatically if it's third and seven plus, here comes their nickel package. All right, well, if we're in one of those situations, let's get lined up, play fast. Maybe they're scrambling. Maybe we get 12 guys on the field. So I think that's really big. Again, like I said, is especially as third down packages are becoming a lot more popular is in, you know, we're scrambling about how to protect and uh, what the coverage looks like and what, and what we really like against those tough looks. Well, keep them out of the game. All right. Let's play fast on third down. Keep the sub personnel out of the game and let's take our best shot from there. And then, like I mentioned already, hey, on a made third down, all right, we convert a third down. Let's try and keep that sub personnel in the game and let's go run and get downhill, run inside zone on them, whatever it is. Um, the, the next piece would just be to get the offense in rhythm, right? Like I think at Monmouth, we've learned that we are at our best when we can really start to get to a lot of these play fast things. You, you can really get it started and then keep it moving uh, is the best way to think about it. You know, maybe we had um, a series where we went three and out or we're in a game and through two drives, we're really struggling to get going. Well, hey, let's start to mix in a lot of the play fast stuff and really just come downhill and get everybody grooving, get them in the flow of the game and get the ball rolling that way, I think is a big way, you know, as you as you start to look, all right, hey, we're struggling. What adjustments can we make? Well, let's play fast and try to get ourselves in a, in a good rhythm that way. And then to, to dictate a defensive look would be the last one, right? Like, hey, we know – um, offensively, we have our play fast called calls our one words. Defensively, they have the same thing, right? De they're, they're defensive play fast calls, defensive one word looks. Um, well, if we know what they are, let's dictate it, right? If we know, hey, when we play fast, the this team is going to be in cover four. All right, well, let's play fast and then call a cover four beater based off that. Um, so that that's when we're doing it. Uh, when are we not doing it, okay? We will never play fast when we're changing personnel. All right. Obviously, with the new rules, when the offense changes personnel, the they the, the officials will stand over the ball and allow the defense to change personnel as well. OK, that's not what we want to do. Right. A similar situation when the ball carrier goes out of bounds on your sideline. Right. The new rules. Hey, the, when the ball carrier gets tackled out of bounds in your sideline, the officials will hold the snap of the ball. OK, so, you know, that that's a big adjustment. Um for us is like a, a lot of times, you know, somebody goes out of bounds on your sideline, maybe it's a big play and you want have to fight that urge to play fast right there. All right. Because we know the officials are going to hold the football. And then in a four minute situation, right, we have the ball, we have the lead. We're trying to drain clock. That's not when we're looking to get to our play fast uh, stuff. OK, but again, that this is really the tempo progression. Going to start to get into it a little bit here, um, but just wanted a, uh, a reminder of it. All right. So our, our base tempo and just so how everybody knows, you know, how we're operating. All right. So, you know, most times, hey, some type of, you know, whatever boundary route, boundary RPO, you know, some type of pre-snap decision on one side and some type of post-snap decision on the other side paired with whatever downhill run scheme you're getting to, okay? So in this situation, we're doing running in zone, okay? We're running inside zone with some type of pre-snap decision for the quarterback up here and some type of post-snap decision for the quarterback down here, okay? So that's the world we're living in, um, is where we're going to allow the quarterback to work cadence, we're going to allow the offensive line to make our calls, and we're going to try and attack the defense where they don't want the ball to go. Okay. Same idea, right? Now I need to set all the same stuff, right? Quarterback works cadence, offensive line works calls, some type of pre snap decision, post snap decision with a downhill run scheme as well. Okay. And set the stage of tempo. Okay. And again, trying to get lined up with uh, 25 set above 25 seconds on the clock to allow us to gather information about the defense. Okay. Not necessarily trying to always snap the ball above 25 seconds, trying to get lined up with above 25 seconds and then let the offense work from there. Okay. So the, the second piece of it would really be our play fast world where we're going to tag a formation and a play. Okay. Um, why are we doing this? Okay. Number one, obviously is to push tempo. Um, but we are going to control formational strength with this. OK, so this is not going to be a one word play call that locks us into a certain formational strength. OK, the play caller will control the formational strength and set it where he wants. OK, 
in addition, we will set the play strength too. Okay. So th this isn't, Hey, we're going trips to the boundary, you know, and we're running inside zone to the field. This is, Hey, we can line up in whatever fast formation we want and call the run scheme wherever we want to go. We're getting to our base offense and our base decisions a lot quicker. Okay. We're going to try and match run schemes, right? So, Hey, if it's a big inside zone week, then we're going to get to our play fast world by matching the run schemes, you know, taking shots down the field and overall playing aggressive. Okay. The, the base run schemes that we really live in, um, in this tempo are inside zone and GT counter. All right. Those are our, our, our biggest two. Okay. We will pair that with some type of play action shot, some type of vertical, some type of post ball. Okay. Because as I'll, you know, I'll get to, but um, our play action is really good in these play play fast situations because you are getting the defensive line out of a pass rush mentality. All right. Something quick, right. Where, Hey, we can just sprint to smash and then it freeze as well. Okay. So just to go a little bit deeper into the mechanics of this, okay? So these are going to be our base formations, okay? But we will use a trigger word to get the offense in a play fast mentality where, hey, we are trying to get lined up and snap the ball as fast as we can, okay? So for example, you know, if we're in a formation that we call trips right, all right, hey, maybe we're calling that trigger right. Right. Or whatever it is. And that word, that trigger word signals to the offense that we are playing fast and trying to get this thing going. OK, so play wise, again, like that trigger word is going to give you a formation. The play call is going to be a word. So, for example, right, like if in our offense, if we wanted to get up in, you know, trips right and run the surf Arizona. OK, surf being um, an RPO. OK, Arizona being a gap zone, right? If we wanted to get up and learn, hey, trips right, surf Arizona, we would just call that turbo state, okay? Turbo state. Turbo saying, hey, we're getting lined up in trips right. It's that trigger word to trigger the play fast mentality. State, okay, building in surf and Arizona into the play call, okay? So it could be, you know, turbo right, state right, okay? Or turbo left, state left. However, we want to set the formation strength and the play strength that week or with that call specifically, okay? So as we get into it, like this is our day, I right, was running play fast inside zone, okay? So again, we can set the formation wherever we want. In this instance, we're setting this to the boundary. And all we're doing is we're running play fast split flow, okay, with an access hitch to the single receiver. On the two receiver side, they've just got their normal run game rule. OK, well, this is dictate a certain defensive look. How are they playing FSL? Right. Well, hey, if they were a team that brought the dog over to the boundary, well, maybe we've maybe we've created a little bit more access that field hitch. Right? This would come in to use that last example as turbo right state right. OK, as opposed to trips right surf Arizona in our base offense. OK. Direct. Okay. So this is split flow inside zone. Easy enough. And I guess the other thing, guys, like I'm I'm more into today talking about um specific mechanics of how we're using play fast as opposed to you know the individual coaching points, right? We all we all can you know sit here and talk about a gap zone, um, but more want to how we're I admit we're building out the families. All right. So same idea, right? So, Hey, we're, we're getting this signaled in from the sideline, a play fast trigger word for the firm formation and then a play fast play call. Okay. Um, to do. Okay. And again, like this is why you're doing it. You know, maybe this is a made first down after a big play. Maybe it was a third down and now they're trying to get different substitution in the game, especially being first and goal on the 10. Well, we're just trying to trigger play fast to be right there 12 guys on the field okay this this is a good two play example of just when this play becomes lethal right of you know this was 2019 we were playing down at kennesaw state in georgia um and we're, we want to run inside zone 
in play fast because number one, that's our bread and butter play, right? Like if you if you're playing Mammoth, you have to stop a gap zone. Okay. Two, this is a downhill play. It's a mentality play where you're getting these guys up front to come off the ball extremely hard against maybe a defensive lineman that's not exactly set yet. Maybe the front and the picture aren't perfect. And we're coming downhill right now at you trying to get four yards. Okay. That's all we're trying to do. Okay. So this is second and short. Again, another good situation to try and call use play fast stuff, you know, where I'm just trying to steal that new set of downs right away. Okay. So we're coming off the ball and we're coming down mentality okay okay and we get it right we, nice from job we nice works right here right and this is all it is right like this is mentality right this is mentality of front just trying try to knock guys up right it becomes really good is when you get the quarterback to take advantage of the access hitch where it's I'm not living in that world of, hey, I'm just handing this thing off constantly. There's still a pre-snap decision here, even though we're in a play fast world, there's still a, a pre-snap decision for the quarterback of, hey, if I have access to this hit, throw. So the very next play of that uh, of the drive, right, where we came out and we you know did a good job on the inside zone, you know, for 15 yards to play. We're calling the same exact play, but the ball is going someplace different. Okay. The ball is going someplace different. We're taking our apps. We get everything available to them. Same idea. Okay. We're going FSL with it. Okay. Split, please, access, access, pitch. Off a pre snap, we step through and we score. Okay. But as you look at these, right, like in, in this example, okay, we're FSL formation. Okay. We're going FSL with the formation. If you back it up, hey, now we're in base offense. We're in normal formational strength to the field. Okay. So by being able to control where the formation strength goes, we're able to get the ball in different spots and really dictate how the defense gets lined up, right? What, what is their FSL track? What are we trying to get them into, okay? Um, and then allowing the ball to hit in different spots. The next one, all right, uh, that we major in in this world, this play fast formation and play world will be our GT counter, okay? Uh, like, again, when are we getting to this play versus a gap zone? Well, hey, maybe it's a game plan week where we're playing a team who likes more tight front, you know, five down, three down, however you want to look at it. And, and a gap zone is not the best call. All right. So, hey, let's get to our play fast GT counter. All right. Where the tight end is going to, uh, you know, come down with the offensive tackle, not being team. And we're working out in a play fast. OK, for the receivers. All right. They're still living in their base run game rules. The single receiver now, instead of running a snap or a hitch, okay, or a snap, however you want to look at it, he's running a smoke. Because what we're saying is we're running GT counter. The quarterback is on a uh, post snap C gap read, okay, where if this guy scrapes for whatever reason, I can pull and I can keep the smoke alive for a late dish out, okay. Again, we don't get there a ton, you know, that might be a little bit of built so coming out okay we're just running a gt counter versus a team that was playing more for the late dish out quarterback backside c gap read okay reading it out do a great job here obviously creasing it and scoring okay but you're able to get lined up fast and get to your base run pictures. Okay? Maybe your base game plan calls or whatever it is. So not lining up and always running a gap zone week to week, getting to your base run schemes, whether it's inside zone, whether it's play fast power, whether it's play fast GT counter. Okay. Building that in to this family to allow you to get there. Okay. What happened here? Back to the start. Okay. 
same, same idea, right? It's like, you know, this was Towson from 22. They were more of a five down team. You know, you don't love inside zone for that. All right. So, hey, in our play fast run world, let's get to our GT stuff. Okay. Because we look like that more against the well the thing that gets you beat and probably gets us beat once a year is when they're bringing play fast corner fire from the defense okay where you're getting that hard scrape by the defensive end so that gives the quarterback a pull read and the corner crash is right there to make the play okay this is how they essentially try and beat it is okay this backside c gap hard scrape is giving him a pull read okay well, as it's drawn on the board, all right, he pulls, and there's my late dish out based on the corner falling it. Okay. Again, is that entirely realistic? Maybe not. What you have to do is really just teach this cue, okay, that if I get this hard scrape and I'm pulling it, I'm pulling this thing downhill, almost like power read, okay, where I'm trying to knife that thing right up the hash to keep it tight and stay away. From that corner folding it not true zone read where i'm pulling this thing and i'm coming out wide with it okay so we get corner crash here qb pulls we should be dead to rights okay but he does a great job of knifing this thing keeping it tight to the hash so now eight can't entirely fall in and make that play okay so we're able to get there quarterback top keeping it tight and you would say to the receiver is, hey, just stay here in pitch out phase. Don't move up the field and you know wave your hands out. Just smoke and stay there. So in case this guy folds in, hey, we can get a late dish out throw to the single receiver right there. Okay. So we're getting to our play fast split flow. We're getting to our play fast GT. We're building in answers with both of them. Okay. Now, as we do that, okay, the next answer is to go play fast, play action shot, okay? Why are we getting to this, okay? Number one is I'm getting the defensive line in a mentality that's not set up for pass rush success, okay? Maybe they're late getting set, okay? Or, you know, maybe they're tired, right? Maybe they're they're not th coming off the ball and thinking play action, drop back, get after the quarterback. They're getting set up and saying, hey, what is the number one play that they do when they're running their play fast stuff? Is it split flow inside zone? OK, so we're going to be able to create clean pockets for the quarterback because you're getting the defensive line out of the pass rush mode. OK, so what is the concept? One, we're just going outside release, speed release, vertical. OK, a lot of times, again, this corner, his feet aren't entirely set or maybe they're a press team. He's getting the call and he's walking down to the line of scrimmage and he's going to get completely taken by surprise that I'm speed releasing, running as fast as I can vertical. OK. And I'm trying to get by him that way. Other routes we're running is we're running a deep cross, okay, 20 yards on the sideline. And then we're going to run a dig from the field, trying to bring it into the picture. Quarterback is really just going vertical, one, to cross, two, to find my back, three. Okay, if I were to lose my back, then I you know, that's when I would come to the dig. But he's not entirely in the progression. All we're trying to do is really steal a cheapy vertical, okay, with one of our fastest guys, okay? So we're going play action, split flow protection, okay? The call would come in as whatever trigger word you're working here, okay, to get these guys in a play fast mentality, and then some type of play fast word that tells these guys what the concept is, okay? Same idea, right? Is we're just getting the play action protection uh, out of play fast, and this is what you want. Okay, catch the defense by surprise. So we've got a really clean pocket for the quarterback to make that throw. Okay, this is, you know, an example. You see the defense is probably a little bit too set up right here. So maybe we weren't as fast getting lined up, but that's all we're trying to do is steal a tempo shot to the receiver right, right now. Okay. Same idea, right? So now we'll get to another one of our base play action calls, okay, where we're going post we're going deep corner cut, okay? Really honestly, just scissors, guys. And then we're going uh, single receivers running a dig. Okay, so same same you know kind of mechanism is this concept, this scissors concept is one of our base play action concepts, okay? In normal offense, in our base tempo. So pairing that with 
some type of play fast trigger so we can get to it with tempo. Okay. And that's all three and the same. So it's the same. The route thing to it that we really do. Okay. Same idea, right? Is like, you know, Sam Houston. Uh, this was from the spring of 21 uh, in the national playoffs. You know, Sam Houston, they had some dudes up front. Okay. So you couldn't set the picture and then expect to block them, to be honest. We had to live in a play fast world to give our guys a shot. Right. So, hey, they're not entirely set. They're not entirely sure how they're getting lined up. That's our best chance to block these guys and give the quarterback time to create an explosive pass play. Okay. And if playing fast in a play action world allows you to do create pockets for the quarterback, okay, as opposed to lining up static, taking your time, uh, and going from there, okay. But and we do a great job on the outside of winning on this post ball, we're just going post corner scissors concept, and then we're going dig from the same idea okay now we're not putting it again fsl i know the ball's more in the middle but we're treating this as true formation strength okay and we're going post scissor cut on it okay so it gives us flexibility in how we're running things that we'll get to out of this one will just be sprint to smash okay sprint to smash take something easy so you've got your downhill runs with your inside zone and your GT counter. You've got your play action shots with your vertical by the boundary receiver, deep cross from the slot. You've got your scissors, post, scissor cut, and now you've got something quick. We can just... Okay. All right, same idea. Okay, so this, again, we're getting in a different formation. We're not in three by one, we're in two by two. Okay, so maybe they're a three fox team to two by two, and you're trying to get the ball opposite rotation. But building the form, controlling the formation strategy allows you to game plan these play fast a little bit more to get something quick or to get something downhill in, in a get you in the proper run scheme. You know, take the proper again. Uh, and then we'll. We'll have our three off it is lined up with tempo, maybe get them into a call they don't want to be in. Okay. Running front a specific front. So we're getting to our freeze. Okay. We're going to signal in that we're running this specific play against a specific look. A certain outside zone. Okay. Get that specific look. Running back does a great job. He makes this safety miss. And we're all right. Score. Love it. Okay. But yeah, right. Maybe we're getting lined up fast and we're just trying to steal five yards. Okay. So it could be first down after a big play. Um, and maybe. You know, we know they're prone to jumping off sides. Well, hey, let's just get lined up fast, freeze them, and see if we see if we just can't steal five yards of offense right away. Okay. The other example, you know, would be to get lined up fast versus a specific look. Okay. New Rhode Island, there were a couple of different ways they would line up to FSL. You know, if they brought that boundary Sam or nickel Sam to the boundary, uh, you know, we wanted to run jet sweep out the other side. All right. If they left him to the field then we were going to run something that attacks the boundary. Okay, so getting lined up fast, seeing how the defense is going to um, react, and then running a play based on whatever you want to get to. Plan. Okay, that's really uh, the mechanism of how our formation, how we control formation strength and play direction to get lined up fast. Okay, the next uh, progression in the tempo world are our one word families. OK, our one word families are going to be a locked formation and alignment. So, for example, the family is going to equal the formation. The word is going to equal the play. OK, so 
as an example, if we are, are in our soprano family, okay, our soprano family is trips open FSL. Every play or word in the soprano family will be a different play. We are getting locked into a formation based on what the family is. Okay, so Sopranos were trips open FSL. Tony, okay, is trips open FSL with inside zone RPO. Okay, but we're just calling Tony, Tony, Tony to get to that picture. Okay, Pauly is again in the Soprano family. So we're going trips open FSL, but it's a different play. Okay, so Pauly, the guys know, hey, that's in the Soprano family. So we're getting trips open FSL. What is Pauly? Pauly is our drop back off of it. Okay, so that's how a lot of it is built. And pretty much in all of our one word families, there's going to be a progression. There's going to be a downhill run with built in RPO throws. There's going to be a quick throw to get the quarterback in rhythm or steal yards. There's going to be a shot play, some type of play action, some type of stutter and go. There will be a freeze and we're able to get to it out of all of our personnel. OK, so these are more so spots on the field. OK, than specific players. All right. So this is really our play fast breakdown. OK, we operate with four main one word families. Right. So, hey, if this one is soprano, you know, and this one is is weather, this one is baseball teams, this one is NBA teams, whatever it is. OK, in each of those families, there will be an RPO, a quick a go, a shot, and a freeze. Okay, so if your family won Sopranos, okay, well, hey, Tony's the RPO. Okay, Polly is the go. And then we're going to work all of the different ones throughout there. So there's a learning progression, right? There's an attachment to how we're getting lined up and we're locking into a formation. And there's also a, a learning progression with it. Okay, we try to as well get these words across families to match up as quickly as possible, right? Or as, as smoothly as possible. So, hey, I know if Tony is our is our downhill run RPO, then in that, that second family, hey, this RPO run has some connection to what Tony is, has some connection to the RPO in, in family three, has some connection to family four uh, RPO. So there's a, a learning progression this way, but there's also a connection this way. So it's easy for the guys to learn and to pick up because you're building you're building a progression and you're building an attachment to what we're doing. OK, so this is our first one, right, um, is our trips open FSL package. OK, trips open FSL package where we're going to put three receivers to the boundary, one receiver to the field. So no matter what we call, we know we're getting trips open FSL in this family. OK, this isn't there's no direction. OK, the one word tells us where exactly we're going. OK, and the first one, all we're doing is we're going smoke to the boundary, access hitch to the field, inside zone. OK, quarterback, again, pre-snap decisions. If I have numbers to the boundary, take the smoke. If I have access on the snap, take it. OK, post-snap decisions is it just zone read. OK, A gap zone, reading the back side C gap. OK, that's all we're doing. OK, so in this picture, again, he's saying, hey, I don't like these numbers to the field or to the boundary. I don't like these numbers to the boundary, you know, maybe because there's low defenders. So I'm just going to read this thing out okay, again. When are we calling this second and short? OK, efficient first down play, play fast, fast and short and you set it down. OK, backside C gap plays outside it off and run inside zone. OK. Similar idea, okay? So trips open FSL family, okay? It's locked to the boundary. It's always trips open FSL. Defensively, okay, they're having trouble communicating the FSL check off their defensive call. There are no numbers over there to the smoke. Banks, so turn and th throw it, okay? Turn and throw it. We do a good job. Now, this is important in terms of, um, you know, how we're operating, right? Like mechanics, okay, is this is something that we've gotten to recently is don't have your guys find the ball. Have your guys find the line judge and set their feet based on that. Maybe the ball gets kicked, right, or it gets fumbled or it has to get adjusted. Maybe the umpire isn't um, – 
correct in his initial placement of the football, the linesman is always correct. Okay. So instead of finding the ball, our eyes should be here and we're going to get lined up based off of him. Okay. So you, you can see our receivers is they're all looking at where the ball is. Eyes should be here so we can get a line a lot quicker at our feet. Okay. But this is the same deal, right? North Alabama. Okay. Trouble adjusting to the trips open FSL in a play fast world, running guys over quarterback. Do I have numbers to the smoke? Okay. Throw this, we end up handing it off. Same thing, right? What's my C gap read? Okay, C gap read squeezes. I should pull this thing. Okay, probably a lot, last, you know, this one off, but I'm going to account. Okay, and the trips open at okay, and then running some type of downhill run with smoke RPOs. It's also important to be able to do this stuff out of multiple personnel. Okay, for example, here we're in 10 personnel, but we are able to run this out of 11 personnel and 12 personnel as well. Okay, so we are placed in different personnel, obviously it's in half practice, but that's when we trade. Okay, all right, the next one is the shot off of it. Okay, so now instead of going smoke, hey, we're going stutter and go. Okay, so hey, we've got smoke. Okay, we're going to work a slow stutter here, hard four count on this on the outside. And we're going to create a fast stutter here on the inside. What we're really trying to do is not necessarily fake guys out, but create levels. Okay, we're trying to create vertical le levels between these two routes to put that overlap corner in a bind. And we're also trying to create horizontal levels. Okay, where number three, his landmark is inside the numbers. Number two's landmark is outside the numbers. Again, what's the answer for how a lot of people line up to this? It's either some type of three fox. Maybe it's just true three fox or, hey, we'll fire 36 fox. What's great about it is you're going to get some type of overlap corner. So those levels are really going to stress them. You're also getting your seam shot. You know, think four verticals seam versus cover three rotation. That's what every coach loves. Okay. To the field, instead of working our quick access hitch, now we're going to work double move. Okay. Quarterback is just going fat inside. Uh, Vertical, outside vertical to chill, smoke. If the coverage entirely rotates to the boundary, then I can take my field one on one as a shot. Okay, so you can see the guys on the outside do a great job of timing for levels. Okay, like this is exactly what we want. Okay, number three is on a two count, he's out first. Number two is on a four count, he's out second. We're putting the overlap corner in a bind. Okay, where he's going to be, you know, chasing that. Okay, if I want to come to this as the second in my progression, we've got a shot. If everything takes to the boundary, I'm taking my field one on one. All right, same idea. Okay, looking our our stack out here again. Really good job with our timing and spacing. Two count, I'm first out. Four count, I'm second out. So again, you're getting cover three. You're putting the overlap corner in a big bind with those two verticals. And I think it's important to try and get the guys to understand we're not necessarily trying to fake guys out on this stutter and go. We're trying to create levels, and that's how we're going to create stress. Okay. So we're hitting here. All, all they're doing is going three week. Okay. We're to an inside seam as if we're running four verticals. Okay. Right, this is another good visual of it. This is from a – you can see, hey, first out, second out, overlap corner. He squeezes on the seam. I'm coming outside to that stuff. But I, I think we're for this stuff, okay? So we've got our smoke, we've got our shot, and then we've got our go, okay? Our go – I'm going to put this one on first, actually. This is just an example of, hey, you know, everything rotates to the boundary. So now we're taking our one-on-one -on -one shape. Ball. Okay. Up. Okay. A shot. Okay. And most of the time I'm in this situation, something good's going to happen. We're either going to catch it or we're going to get PI. Okay. Worst case situation. 
situation, isn't it? Okay. And now, so we got our, our smoke, got our, uh, our go. Okay. Our go out of this family is just post, dig, wheel. Okay. Vertical to the field. Again, same thing. If the coverage rotates, I can take my field. Just proud here. You guys see the safety of the field right to the boundary. Hey, take my field one on one. Take this shot right here late. Okay. But that's all we're going is we're going post dig wheel okay Try to steal something whether it's a, a cheap post or maybe we get them on the wheel obviously the dig really being the occupy back just chilling to the boundary you don't get family the second um is our trips fsl so instead of being trips open fsl now we're just trips fsl same progression though the first one is going to be what it's going to be smoke, okay, access hitch, inside zone, okay, same exact thing as that previous family. So we're, we're building that progression, okay, same exact decision for the quarterback. Hey, pre-snap, if I have numbers to the smoke, take it, okay? I don't here because they've got two over two. We've got, got pre-snap access to the field, awesome, take it. We got one-on-one -on -one with our receiver versus field corner. If I don't love either of those, okay, bang, just hand it off. And let's run a gap zone. Uh, so this mission, right? Like, hey, we're in third and five here, third and four, and we're playing fast. Mostly because we probably know we're going for it on fourth down. We're in four down territory. We can play fast. We can hit this thing because we got two to get. It. Okay. Uh, maybe we're keeping the two. Okay. But we're lined up in a gap zone. That play right we're going trips fsl in our family okay hey they don't have numbers out there to the smoke okay so throw it out there right hey bang let's go so this is like hey how, how are a lot of teams going to stop play fast well they're going to have their one word where they're bringing the dog or the sam off the edge okay strong rotation we're throwing smoke opposite kicking it out there to the boundary getting the ball behind road rotation so a lot of good because the answer defense play uh, uh, tempo calls as well. To match this, getting play fast, there's no numbers over there to the smoke, throw it out there. Okay, trying to steal five yards. I would do a great job of catching a knife in there. We we're able to create 15 yards by throwing a smoke. Okay, and this again, like similar to the first play we show where we're lining up and play fast and we're running split flow inside zone, this play becomes really good when you start to take that field access hit. Okay. So quarterback, right? He might be saying, Hey, I don't love this for whatever reason. He's saying, I got access to this hitch. I'm taking it. Okay. Again, we've got will fire here. So it's the same thing guys, right? It's like, all right, Hey, if they're a will fire team. Okay. Well, let's get the ball opposite rotation. Okay, quarterback does a good job here just seeing the field and getting the ball. Now you got a chance, right? You got your receiver against the field corner. Make them tackle you. Tackle the shit out. We're just going to run, you know, tight end screen RPO, right? Whatever you guys call that. Tight end to the flat where we're reading the C gap and we're kicking the ball out. This is another good one for the mechanisms of getting lined up, right? We want the receivers to be looking at the linemen. Make sure my center is looking at the lineman, okay? The other offensive lineman will adjust off the center, but we shouldn't be getting lined up based on where the ball is, based on where the umpire is. You can see the kid in the slot right here. You know, he thinks he's on the ball, right, because he's looking inside, okay, where if the entire time his eyes were on the linesman, he would have already been lined up correctly. Okay. All we're doing the same thing. Field access hitch. Okay. C gap read for the quarterback. If I get shallow chase, we're throwing it out there to the tight end and we're working our perimeter blocking rules on the outside. Okay. To then chases. Okay. Bang. Kick it out to the tight end arrow. Okay. You really want to try and drill this and get the quarterback to put this ball right on the inside or upfield number so that this tight end can turn his shoulders and get upfield on it. Okay really helps those people back 
pedal out of this thing, which is idea either. Okay, but a lot of times if I put this ball right here on that outside shoulder, it's hard for those guys to catch a knife and get upfield. Put that ball on the inside shoulder so he has to turn up, turn his shoulders to catch it, and he's going to build the momentum upfield. Okay, on the outside perimeter blocking, we're getting the corner, and then we're going to pin the overhang inside to create that funnel for the ball carrier right there. Okay, watch the corner, take him where he wants to go to the sideline, pin the overhang player, catch and knife. Okay, get into this out situation, right? We're one more. This is our same family. See gap player squeezes, dish it out. Okay, good ball placement. We're going pin, okay, on the inside to create that funnel for the ball carrier. All right, so now we've run our tight end arrow a bunch. Well, what comes off it? Now comes our stutter and go. Same exact progression as that other family, right, guys? Where I have my smoke downhill RPO, and I had my stutter and go off of it. Same thing here. We had our smoke RPO, and now we've got our stutter off of it. Same exact play, same exact coaching points. Tight end's coming out to the flat. Inside guy, first out. Two count, seam. Outside guy, second, four count, second out. Trying to put this guy in a bind. Okay? So, again, watch the spacing and timing of these receivers. Okay? Two vertical, right up the seam. We drill it to him for a touchdown. But you guys can see, again, right, like they're going will fire three fox. Okay? So, we're getting the ball to the seam just like you would try to do in four verticals. Okay? If we don't love it, and the, the corner overlaps, okay, kind of like he's taught to do. Well, here comes my second out, okay. Throwing it behind him. Okay? It's like from a couple years ago, but this outside receiver is too fast. Right? We get our seam shot, okay, but the outside receiver is way too fast right there. And we're getting 12 guys on the field. You know, we're getting all that. That type of stuff. Okay. The next family would really be like our two by two family. Okay. So this will show up a lot, you know, two by two spread. You know, we'll get to a lot of our two minute calls coming out of this, but the progression is the same. Okay. Downhill run. Here we're running our GT with smokes on either side. GT with smokes on either side. Again, pre snap decision, pre snap decision. If I don't like either of those smokes, hand it off. If the end squeezes, Boundary smoke will stay alive for the late dish out, just like that initial GT counter, okay, right? When we came back to the second, we hand it off here, okay? What's that lined up? Hey, I've got numbers to the boundary, take. Right, numbers to the boundary, take it, right? Like, what is this, right, guys? Hey, we're in four down territory, it's third and seven. So we're getting to our tempo calls because we know we have to to get it. Okay, maybe they're, you know, they had subbed in, you know, you can look at it a little bit, right? It's like they're trying to get to some type of substitution defense where they're trying to run this guy on, but we're playing fast. He's coming off, this guy's coming off the field. They're not exactly sure how to get lined up. So if you're playing a sub third down, tempo calls are good, particularly, Particularly when you're in true two down territory. Okay. All right. So you guys know by now, hey, what comes off, you know, our smoke RPO. All right. Well, here comes your stag now, right? Here comes your stutter. Okay. So we got smoke. Okay. We got stutter out to the corner. And then we're just going to pair that, you know, with almost like your Y cross stuff, whether it's hash, you know, and, and post curl. Okay. But same thing, right? Like, hey, I'm. Building it all together, learning of these aren't just random words. You, know, you have to build family. It's going to make the learning a lot easier for your players when you do that. Thank you, right? We're going, we've run the smoke GT a bunch. Okay. So now we're going smoke. Okay. We're going smoke, stutter. Okay. And we're bringing the hash. And the post curl from the field. Okay, and we got them. All, right, all of these are our play fast calls, right? And again, be able to get to it at multiple personnel. Here we're running this right now at a 10 personnel. The one we watched just watched previously was out of 11 personnel. 
okay? So that the systems of getting lined up that way. The only thing I other, you know, wanted to touch on quick was just like the huddle procedure stuff and how we're doing that is like, when are we using our huddle? You know, some type of unbalanced runs, you know, some type of wildcat, maybe FSL, or if we're getting to our one word families off, maybe some type of stoppage, right? So as, as you look at this, like this is the one that we watched previously of our trips FSL, but we're getting to this off of a huddle. Okay. Maybe, you know, we wanted to call it, you know, maybe the ball got kicked around, right. And they were slow getting it set. And now the defense is totally set up. Okay. Well, Hey, let's get in a huddle, try and hide the hand and then push tempo from there. Okay. So getting in a huddle and again, our procedures, we're going to send the receivers and the center first on the first go. Second go, everybody else is breaking the huddle, sprinting to get aligned. Okay. It's just, it's just sugar huddle. That's all it is. Okay. Right. Play fast cadence and then we're rolling. Okay. Same exact idea, right? It's hey, we're breaking the huddle and we're getting to that first family. Okay. There's our first family where we're going smoke inside zone, snap RPO. Okay. Same stuff we've been doing, just being able to utilize it out of getting to a huddle. The last thing I wanted to touch on is just how we drill it because I think it's pretty good. Um, is in unit going three lines on air. Okay, and we'll, we'll watch that here in a sec. Uh, in unit period, going one group time to score, making it competitive. Uh, doing a daily team tempo period versus the defense where, hey, the ones are going for five plays, the twos are going for five plays, the threes are going for five plays, and everybody's just working their one-word calls, offensively and defensively. In move the ball periods that are non-scripted and you're moving the ball, so we won't practice our play fast stuff um, in a scripted period where the ball is coming back to the same line of scrimmage, right? Like, hey, if we're like in a pass under pressure period um, and the ball is always resetting to the 35-yard line, we're not working our tempo calls there. We're working our tempo calls when we're playing football, moving the ball, you know, true down and distance, first and second down, all those things. And then the last thing I would mention is just it's always good to film the time between the plays so you can coach that up. Like, hey, what are the receivers looking at? What are the centers looking at? How are we getting the ball? to the official all those things i think are important but this is like our day one how we're drilling play fast so we're going three groups up okay on a line okay so hey let's say your ones are on the goal line your twos are on the 15 your threes are on the 30. okay signalers signalers are here in the middle they will signal for every group okay so we're signaling something they're getting lined up okay we're all running the same play going the same direction okay we run it, you know, five yard burst, whatever you guys want to do. The next play, again, snap our eyes to the sideline. And now we're riversiding it and we're all going that way. Whether it's the same play or a different play, we're getting a new signal every time. Okay. So it's a really good way to just bang out a ton of reps and get everybody reps of what we're doing. Okay. And then the last thing would be, uh, you know, one group time to move the ball to score. Say, so, hey, we're going five plays to score here. You know, your true team takeoff stuff or team tempo stuff, whatever you guys call it, but timing each group as they go, making it competitive, you know, I think are good ways to, uh, to get it done there. So those are a couple of ways that we drill it. But, you know, just to reiterate, I think when, you, when and why you use tempo is important, and that's been a big part of our success, but also making sure that there's carryover between it, building out those families, building out that learning progression, and being able to get to your base calls where you can um, handle and control the formation strength and the play direction, uh, you know, I think are, I think are big points there. Um, were there Coach, I know I'm kind of on time here. Were there, were there any uh, questions about anything? Anybody got any questions? Um, I'm going to text Coach Sosha, make sure he got the, the right link because I sent the wrong link to the guys. Um, so, Coach, yeah, if, if anybody's got any questions, put it in there. If not, um, Coach, thank you for coming on, and we'll just wait till Coach Sosha comes on. Um, but I appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks for having me again. Great cause, you know. Hopefully uh, we can raise a bunch of money for it. And, you know, thank you guys for asking me to come on. It was great. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Have a good rest of the weekend. Right, thank you. All right, y'all. I'm going to I'm gonna sign off, um, but I'll be back on with Coach so she gets on here. Okay, so hang on. Appreciate y'all.
It's Coach Taylor. I had messed up and I had to resend the link to the speakers today, so I apologize. Uh, Coach Social will be on here in a minute. But thank y'all.